Welcome back everyone to our last example, example number five on partial fraction decomposition. If you haven't checked out our intro or how to's or any of our other examples, this might not be the best first start for you. Um, but if you've done a couple and you're looking for something a little bit more challenging, then try this one out with us for sure. We're happy to have you here. So I have x cubed minus x squared plus x minus two on the top. And I have that over x squared plus 2 quantity squared. So I have, not only do I have a quadratic factor, but it is also a repeated factor as noted by the square out here. So if I think about when I have a repeated factor, I must write all powers of that factor up to the multiplicity present, up to multiplicity 2. So I need to write the first power of x squared plus 2 and I need to go all the way up to the square power of it, so I need to then also create another fraction with x squared plus 2 squared as our denominator. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and assign our numerators now. Now the factor is quadratic, so I need all powers, all terms below x squared, so I will need an x term and I will need a constant in the first one. Similarly, x squared is what is in the factor, right? This squared, don't think about applying it and making the fourth power. That's just saying we have a repeated factor there. The factor itself is actually x squared plus 2, so I'll need all terms below x squared, which would be an x term and a constant term, and I'll use c and d since we already have a and b there. If we got a common denominator, then the numerator in the left side wouldn't change. It already has the original denominator, which is our common denominator. This is our common denominator. So uh, the ax plus b only has one copy of x squared plus 2 underneath it. So if I was getting a common denominator, I would multiply in another copy of x squared plus 2 into this fraction in order to have a common denominator on the bottom. And the cx plus d fraction already has the same denominator that we started with, so it already has the common denominator, and we would not actually multiply anything into that one, so it would just stay as it is with nothing else put in. Okay, now we look at this and we say, what might I set x equal to to give me zero for one of the factors? Well, the only factor we have, really, is x squared plus 2, and if you try to set this equal to 0, you're going to get some sort of a complex number, an imaginary term is what you'll end up with, and that's not really what we want. So what we need to do right off the bat, since there's no way to get any of a, b, c, or d by setting factors equal to 0, we need to distribute and compare coefficients right away. Okay, so on the left side, we have x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 2 if I distribute over here, I'll have ax times x squared, so that's ax cubed. Distributing ax there would give me plus 2ax. Distributing b here will give me plus bx squared. And distributing b to the next one will give me 2b. Uh, we just have plus cx plus d because there's nothing to distribute there. And now we combine any like terms that we have. So nothing on the left to do. It is as simple as it's going to get for now. Over here, I'll look at, this is my only x cubed term. So I just have a x cubed. If you notice, I only also have one x squared term as well. So that tells me the x squared stays as it is. If you look next at my x terms, I have an x term there and there. So I really have 2a plus c x's if you combine those together. And for the constants, we have 2b and d. So that will give us 2b plus d for our constant. Now we simply compare from side to side like terms. So the x cubed term, this is like a 1x cubed, so we have a 1 being the same as a over here. So that tells me right away a equals 1, and that's solved, and that's great. If we look at the next one, I have this. This is really like a negative 1 here, so negative 1 is equal to b, and that tells me b is equal to negative 1, and that one's solved as well. Good job. All right, moving on to the x terms. Plus x, so that's like a 1x, and over here I have 2a plus c x's. So that tells me that 2a plus c 
is equal to 1. And the last one, I have negative 2 here, and that's equal to 2b plus d. So 2b plus d is equal to negative 2. And we've already got two of these solved, and that's going to help us get these other ones here. So if I plug in a is 1 into this 2a plus c, that would give me 2 plus c is equal to 1. Subtracting 2 on both sides, that will give me c is negative 1. So that one's good to go. And now plugging in the b equals negative 1 over here is going to help me solve d. So if I have b times 2, that will give me negative 2 plus d equals negative 2. In this one, it looks like when I add 2 to both sides, I get that d is 0. So actually, that in our expression won't be there. We won't have a d there. So let's write what we have. We have ax plus b on the top here, and that's a 1 and a negative 1. So we have 1x minus 1. That's our ax plus b term over x squared plus 2 plus, now we'll do cx plus d. c was negative 1, so I guess maybe I don't really want to write plus, but I would rather write minus x. And since d is 0, there's no constant on the top there either. Over x squared plus 2, all squared. Okay, so a little bit different in that we couldn't even get a single factor from our first method of setting factors equal to 0, but... Uh, when we distributed and compared coefficients on both sides, it turns out some of them solved very, very quickly, so that was nice. Okay, thanks for watching our partial fraction decomposition videos. We hope this helps you, uh, whether you're doing pre-calculus or calculus 2 or differential equations and setting these up. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. We'll see you in the next video.